Hello, David Harper, a Bionic Turtle, with a brief tutorial on how to calculate a bond's yield to maturity, also called its yield. I'm showing the formula here that includes the yield to maturity. We won't look at this so much as I'm going to show you how to calculate the yield to maturity in both Microsoft Excel and with the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus calculator. But here is the formula, and although it looks pretty fancy, it's just a discounted cash flow. Right here, small y, is the yield to maturity, such that if we purchased the bond today at the market price, this is the market price, what would we get for the bond if we bought it? We would get the promise of future cash flows, represented here by coupons, small c, and eventually the return of the principal or face value. So we pay this market price for the bond, we get back in the future coupons and principal. The rest of the formula simply discounts those cash flows. We need to know T, the number of years or time to maturity for the bond, and Y then gives us the yield to maturity. We multiply T by 2 and divide Y by 2 because I'm going to show you we typically for bonds work in a semi-annual period or semi-annual basis. But the yield to maturity is the yield that if plugged into this formula and therefore if used to discount the future cash flows gives us back solves for a present value which is equal to the price of the bond. So it ends up being an internal rate of return. Now I'll show you that in Excel and then with the Texas Instruments calculator. I've opened Excel so that I can calculate the yield to maturity of a bond. In order to do that, I need to provide four inputs or facts about the bond so that we can solve for the fifth variable. So here they are highlight in yellow. First, the face value of the bond, that's also called the par or principal. I'm going to assume $1,000. I need a market price of the bond, and I'm going to assume $950. I need a maturity or time to maturity of the bond. I'm going to assume 10 years. I also need the coupon rate, and here to illustrate, I'm assuming a 6% coupon paid semi-annually. Now, instead of going straight to the function that calculates the yield to maturity, I'm going to translate these numbers. I could do the translation inside the function, but I'm going to do it outside just to show you what we do in order to translate these annualized numbers into semi-annual periods. So first, the face value of 1,000, I'm going to carry that over directly. The price of the bond is $950. I'm simply going to put a negative sign in front of that because I'm going to assume it's a cash outflow, as in we pay for the bond $950, and what we get back are cash inflows in the form of coupon and returned principal. Now the number of periods is simply my years to maturity, 10 years, multiplied by 2, because I'm going to use a periodicity, or six month periods. And so in 10 years, we have 20 periods. Now if my period is six months, then what is my coupon over six months? Well, that is given by, I'll take this formula out and just recalculate, that's given by my coupon rate of 6% multiplied by my face value. If I stopped there, we know I would be getting $60 in coupon payments per year from the bond, except I want to divide by two because I'm using six month periods. So that's my $30 coupon paid semi-annually. So you can see all I did here was take my input assumptions and convert them to numbers I can use on the idea that my period, the basis for my calculations is six month intervals then I can calculate the yield to maturity simply by using Excel's built-in rate function. And so I just say equals rate, open parens. First I give it the number of periods, comma, then I give it the coupon payments, comma, then I give it the present value, 
It's going to be a negative number in my case. And then I give it the future value, which in our case is a face value. So you can see all of these parameters in the rate function are really time value of money parameters. We're using rate to calculate the yield to maturity because bond math really is time value of money math. So the rate function does give us the yield to maturity and it's 3.35 percent but before we use that let's remember that's on a six month period and so I convert that to a bond equivalent basis by multiplying by two. I double it to convert the six month period to a bond equivalent basis and 6.69 percent then becomes my yield to maturity. So that's the example in Excel and now I'll just go back and show you how we'd use the Texas Instruments calculator to do the same thing. Now let's do the same thing with the Texas Instruments VA2 Plus calculator and bond pricing is made easy with the Texas Instruments calculator because they put all of the time value of money functions on the same row. On my TI calculator, it's the third row. We can see we've got N, which in our case is the number of periods, I slash Y, which is interest rate. In our case, that is going to be the yield to maturity. So we can call that the yield, the yield to maturity, and as I've said, it's really the in internal rate of return as well. PV is present value. In our case for the bond, that's the price. PMT is the periodic payment. In our case, that's the coupon. FV, in our case, is future value. And that's why I like to call the bonds principal the face value, but you can also call it the par value. So hopefully you can see that on the calculator, we have five time value of money keys. They correspond to bond elements of the bond. And generally speaking, for a plain vanilla bond, we input any four of them and solve for the fifth. So in the case of the yield to maturity, that's right here, that's this key, we're going to input the other four and then solve for the fifth by hitting the compute or CPT button. So in our case, that looks like n equals 20. I'm going left to right in terms of the calculator. We're going to input n equals 20. That's because we have 10 years, but we're multiplying by 2 because we're using semi-annual periods. We skip over to the present value and we input negative 950. That's because we want to, we're going to treat that as a cash outflow. For payment, that's our coupon. We're going to input 30 because again, that's a coupon rate of 6% multiplied by the face value, which equals $60 per year, but we're using semi-annual periods, so it's $30. And then our future value or face of 1,000. We input those four, then we come back and we hit compute, the IY key, and we should get something close to 3.35%, the same number we got in Excel. And then we want to remember that this is the semi-annual period so we multiply by 2 for the bond equivalent yield that's the bond equivalent basis of 6.69 percent so that's how we do the yield to maturity with the Texas Instruments and that concludes the tutorial on yield to maturity this is David Harper the Bionic Turtle thank you for your time